Hey guys, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel MBBS Treasure. Today we are going to discuss a very 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 important topic as well that is derivatives of monosaccharide. It is a part of carbohydrate that we should remember because when the monosaccharide reacts with some components of some or some compounds then what are the products that it gives that we are going to discuss in this today's topic. So what are the various derivatives of sugars or the monosaccharides that are formed in our body like by oxidation of monosaccharides by reduction of monosaccharides or deoxy sugars then sugar phosphates or amino sugars these are the compounds of the products that are formed when the monosaccharides undergoes oxidation reaction or reduction reaction then or the types of uh, deoxy sugars means there will be absence of oxygen from hydroxyl group then sugar phosphates means there will sugar phosphates and amino sugars these are the two substitution types of reactions that are formed with monosaccharides so today in this uh, topic we are going to discuss all these things then we are going to read about by oxidation of monosaccharide what do you mean by oxidation of monosaccharide when the monosaccharide containing the carboxylic or alcoholic group that will undergo oxidation then it will be converted to carboxylic group in presence of oxidizing agent the process of conversion of alcoholic group to aldehydic group or ketonic group then further to carboxylic group is known as oxidation okay in this oxidation it requires an oxidizing agent that could be mild oxidation strong oxidation and controlled oxidation conditions i have taken an example of d glucose here d means the penultimate carbon atom of glucose contains the hydroxyl group present in the right side so it is d glucose and it has aldehyde group in the presence of c1 and in c6 it has alcoholic group when the oxidation of these groups takes place then it gives certain types of products known as aldonic acids aldehydic or saccharic acids then uronic acids what do you mean by aldonic acids if oxidation of only aldehyde group to carboxylic group takes place under mild condition that is in bromine water then aldonic acids are formed examples like like gluconic and galactonic acid what do you mean by uronic acids if the oxidation of this terminal alcohol group to carboxylic group takes place under controlled oxidation condition that is platinum carbon catalyst then it is known as uronic acids examples like glucuronic acids and galacto uronic acids if the next conditions comes here if both the aldehyde group as well as the terminal alcoholic group undergoes oxidation to the carboxylic group both here undergoes oxidation to carboxylic group under strong oxidation condition that is concentrated nitric acid then it will be called as aldehyde or saccharic acids example glucosaccharic acids and galactosaccharic acids the structure will be in aldonic acid this will be converted to coh only this compound will be converted into coh in uronic acid the terminal carbon atom undergoes oxidation so it will be only coh and both the coh will be present in terminal carbons in glucose structure if it will be aldehyde or saccharic acid this will this will be the structures then what will be the significance of uronic acids that are formed glucouronic and galactouronic and l iodouronic acids that are the component of glycosaminoglycans okay and these are the glycosaminoglycans are the important matrix or, or cellular substances in different connective tissues okay or cell membrane components then glucuronic acids uh, this acid can you helps in conjugation and detoxification of toxic substances like bilirubin the bilirubin that is the toxic substances it helps to detoxify it the glucuronic acid then by reduction of monosaccharides what does this means reduction of monosaccharide means there will be formation of more and more alcohols from the carboxylic or aldehydic or ketonic group reduction of carbonyl group to hydroxyl group these then are called polyhydroxy alcohols as there will be formation of more number of alcohols so it will be called as polyols 
Here you can see an example that I have shown the D-glucose. When it has aldehyde group converts into alcoholic group, then it is known as sorbitol. If the D-fructose containing the ketonic group will be converted to alcoholic group, then it will be called as mannitol. The sorbitol and mannitol have same structure, but there is only one difference in the second carbon atom and the presence of the hydroxyl group. If the hydroxyl group is present at the right side, then it is known as sorbitol. If the hydroxyl group is present in the left side, then it will be called as mannitol. Similarly, when other monosaccharides like glycerolide will undergo reduction, then it will give glycerol. When mannose will undergo, it will give mannitol. Then galactose, dulcetol, ribose, ribitol, xylulose, xylitol. Okay. Significance of the reduction of monosaccharides like glycerol is a component of triacyl glycerols and phospholipids. And ribitol, it is a component of vitamin riboflavin, that is B2 vitamin and coenzymes like FMN and FAD. FMN is flavin mononucleotide or it is a product of riboflavin 5 phosphate and FAD is flavin adenine dinucleotide. Okay, we are going to read about these two in future classes. Then what is the clinical importance of reduction of monosaccharide or polyols? Sorbitol is a compound that we know here. It is produced from glucose and accumulation in diabetes of this sorbitol causes cataract. Then manintol, it is a used as diuretic. Why it is used as diuretic? Because it decreases intracranial pressure. So it can be used or it is used as a diuretic, manintol. Then sorbitol, manintol and dulcetol, the products of reduction of monosaccharide that are formed can be used to identify the bacterial colony as the sugars alcohols are used as energy sources by specific bacterial colonies. Those bacterial colonies use these specific energy sources like glucose, fructose and they reduce the monosaccharide to form the sorbitol, mannitol and dulcetol and that can be used to identify the bacterial colony. Then next we are going to read about the next derivative of sugar or monosaccharide that is deoxy sugars. What do you mean by deoxy? The oxygen of hydroxyl group will be removed from the monosaccharide that it will become from CH2OH to CH3 or CHOH to CH2. Here the oxygen will be removed to form CH3 and here also the oxygen will be removed to form CH2. I have taken an example to show the deoxy sugars that this is a structure of ribose in which in the second carbon atom the hydroxyl group is present in the below and in this is a structure of deoxyribose the same structure similar to it but the only difference is that in second carbon atom it is deoxy means there is absence of oxygen in the second carbon atom below okay so ribose is converted to deoxy ribose what is the significance of deoxy sugars significance like this deoxy ribose it is a structural component of nucleic acid and we know it very well L fucose is a monosaccharide uh, that, that is converted into L deoxy galactose. It, this is a deoxy sugars. It is important constituent of blood group antigens. Okay. Then comes the next or uh, substituted type of derivative of monosaccharide that is sugar phosphates. What are sugar phosphates? When the hydroxyl group of monosaccharides is esterified by phosphoric acids when it is esterified by phosphoric acid that is S3PO4 this OH group will be replaced by phosphoric PO4 3 minus phosphate group so it will be forming different intermediate products or sugar phosphates what are the examples of sugar phosphates that is glucose 1 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate fructose 1 6 bisphosphate here the name of uh, these compounds or the intermediate products of sugar phosphates are named according to the position of phosphate group present 1, 6 and 1, 6 bisphosphate. It means in the structure of glucose 1 phosphate, the phosphate group is present in the first carbon atom. So it is known as glucose 1 phosphate. Similarly, the in glucose 6 phosphate, the phosphate group is present in the sixth carbon atom of glucose 6 phosphate. So it is known as 6 
phosphate and 16 bisphosphate in fructose means bis means 2 so phosphate two phosphate groups present in position first and sixth carbon atom so first carbon atom and sixth carbon atom okay then sugar phosphates are in important intermediates of carbohydrate metabolism when the carbohydrate metabolism metabolism takes place then these are the compounds or these are the uh, derivatives that are formed in between the metabolism of carbohydrate process this is important then comes next type of substituted derivative of monosaccharide that is amino sugars when the hydroxyl group is replaced or substituted by amino group that is nh2 then it will be called as amino sugars examples like glucosamine galactosamine mannosamine here you can see it is a structure of glucosamine that i have drawn that glucosamine is amine group is present in the second carbon atom nh2 group in amino sugars the amine group is mostly present in c2 carbon okay most of the amino sugars the amine group is present in c2 carbon you have to remember this what are the significance this glucosamine and galactosamine are important component of glycoso amino glycans then glucosamine is present in the blood group substances and mannosamine is present in the glycoproteins the next we are going to read about acetyl derivatives of amino sugars we now know that what do you mean by amino sugars if the sugar contains the nh2 group then it will be called as amino sugars if this amino sugar will undergoes acetylation then what are the products it will be forming this is the structure of glucose okay then amine group is added to it to form glucosamine if this glucosamine will be reacted with acetyl group then it will forming an acetyl glucosamine so you can see the structures here it is a glucose structure then amine group is added then it will be forming the glu glucosamine structure because here it is nh2 group then glucosamine when it is reacted with acetyl group it will be forming an acetyl glucosamine n acetyl glucosamine and n acetyl galactosamine are present in glycoso amino glycans that is gag and proteins and cell membranes this importance of n acetyl glucosamine or galactosamine is that it is present in the cell membrane proteins and glycoso amino glycans then a next important component is nana n acetyl neuraminic acid or sialic acids this is a important part of sugar derivatives uh, that we are going to read mostly because it is it is helpful in many of the processes so sialic acids what do i mean by sialic acids these are the derivatives of amino sugars or nana and its derivatives are called as sialic acids this nana how it's formed when mannosamine reacts with pyruvic acid under condensation it will give neuraminic acid neuraminic acid and this neuraminic acid when it undergoes acetylation or reacts with acetyl group then it will be forming n acetyl neuraminic acid or nana the derivatives of nana is called as sialic acids sialic acids neuraminic acids and nana are found in glycoproteins and glycolipids glycoproteins and glycolipids This is when d mannosamine reacts with the pyruvic acids uh, this is a structure of d mannosamine when the mannose reacts with amine group to form the mannosamine and then it reacts with the pyruvic acids then the pyruvic acid will be substituted in the c1 position of manno mannosamine this is the c1 position of mannosamine to form the neuraminic acid and then when neuraminic acid undergoes the acetylation to react with the acetyl group then it will be forming the n acetyl neuraminic acid or nana it will here it is the first the pyruvic acid group then second the acetyl group that is substituted in the h position of nh2 like here the h is replaced by the acetyl group 
to form the N-acetyl glucosamine.